Hello! Here today to do a reading for a new client uh, named Heather. And Heather has asked for uh, a Celtic Cross reading, uh, very basic. And I've already shuffled the cards. Uh, Heather, you didn't have a specific question for me, so we just asked for general stuff. Uh, see what was going on, what was the most pressing thing that uh, that uh, Tara wanted to talk about, um, or however you want to phrase it. And uh, I've already picked a significator for you. Heather is a Taurus, so using my system, I, uh, I chose the Queen of Discs to represent Heather as a significator. Uh, and let's get to it. Since we're already all shuffled, let's see if we can... And Heather, I whipped out the big cards for you today. <laughs> I haven't been using them, but I felt like it was time. So... Uh, immediately we can say on the bottom of the deck is the priestess, uh, which encourages me. That is always a good sign, I think. Oh, yeah. No, this is good stuff you have on the bottom. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But first, uh, to talk about what you've got actually got in your, in your readings here. You've got uh, covering you the Knight of Wands, which tells me that yeah, you're... Uh, very enthusiastic about something at the moment. Um, crossing you is the Nine of Swords, um, which means that you're you're also at the same time pretty nervous about it. You, uh, I think, a lot of this reading that you have come to me for is possibly about your um, is possibly to do with spirituality and. Um, Perhaps a path that you want to take with it that is not necessarily conventional. Um, and I think you're afraid of possibly either hurting others by doing it or there, there's some concern around um, the idea of just causing harm to either yourself or, or, or others. Um, though it seems to me right now you're the one dealing with most of the stress of it. Uh, crowning you is the Seven of Cups, which is interesting, and gra excuse me, grounding you is the Star. In the past is the Prince of Cups, <laughs> and, <laughs> and in the future is the Ace of Swords. Um, okay, I'm going to just finish laying out your reading. Uh, your perspective is the Queen of Cups. And actually, let me change this so that you can actually kind of actually see everything. Uh, <laughs> Queen of Cups is your perspective. Your environment or external factors are represented by the Hanged Man. Your hopes and fears are the Seven of Discs. And your overall outcome is the Empress. Okay, this is good. And then again, on the bottom of your deck is the Priestess. So, um, what does all this mean? Um, I, again, I, I see you as in, in a time of your life right now where you really want to try new things. You seem um, very interested in, in pursuing things that are... Um, beyond reality, necessarily. Um, I think the priestess really informs us here that this is uh, about your approach to spirituality. And the other thing that really confirms that for me, I think, is the Knight of Wands. Because the Knight of Wands does technically have a very um, spiritual quality to him. And I think it's important to remember that about him. Um, the star also, I think, for me, kind of clues us in here to uh, to realizing that... Let me just turn this volume up so you can hear me a little bit better. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, there, I hope that's better. Sorry, what was I saying? Um, right, the star. Uh, and the star also tells me just that you have a lot of opportunities in front of you. Um, and this, this, I, I get the sense that this is something that has sort of just 
um, happens to come up for you that, you know, because below the priestess you have fortune. And so I see some of this as being uh, just good luck, <laughs> uh, which of course is great. Uh, the star tells me that you're also very, despite having this concern about the Nine of Swords, you generally, I think, are fairly optimistic about all this, and you have high hopes. There are definitely concerns that come with this uh, and taking this path, but I think it's one that you're excited about and that you're, um, that you definitely see a lot of potential in. Um, in the past is the Prince of Cups, and that can either be an individual who has perhaps set you on this, or, um, I, I, I'm not, honestly, I'm not, I, I, I kind of want to say it's your brother. Because I, I, I get the sense that you, because I, I was looking around on your, on your YouTube page, and I know that you are, um, an ex-Mormon, and I don't know if that is kind of factoring in here a little bit. I hate to know too much background stuff um, beforehand, but sometimes it can be useful uh, just, you know, so that I can give you a better reading. And I, I kind of sense that some of that might be in this reading. Um, the reason I think it might be a sibling uh, or a close family relation is because of the fact that you see yourself as the Queen of Cups and in the past as the Prince of Cups. They are very much related uh, in terms of family, you know, when I read, I, I tend to see, um, it just, it, it's something that my intuition has always sort of hinted at, that, uh, court cards that are of the same suit when they appear in the same reading tend to be related <clears throat> to each other very directly. Either they're very close friends or very close family members or something like that. Um, technically, technically, it would be from a court perspective, your son, but I don't know if you have a son. Um, but either way, and long story short, it's someone in your past that has, um, I don't know if they've necessarily approved of, of the path you've taken. I, I think they've probably kind of left you alone about it and for the most part have minded their own business. But at the same time, for whatever reason you feel this kind of obligation to them. Um, they are still sort of in your mind <clears throat> at all times with this. And I don't think that they necessarily approve of what you're doing. Um, but I don't think that they necessarily would tell you that. And that's just because of the nature of the Prince of Cups. You know, and the, the reason I'm getting this is just all of your water cards sort of have this general... <clears throat> connectivity uh, that kind of goes back to the relationship between the Queen of Cups and the Prince of Cups. You know, you see yourself as the Queen of Cups, you see yourself as fairly detaché about the whole thing, and um, again, trying to mind your own business as well, and, and also trying to just tap into a more, excuse me, a more intuitive side of yourself, a more... Um, relaxed, a more peaceful side of yourself. Um, and I think that in your environment, you know, you have the hanged man. I, I think that this really clues us in that where you are living right now is not necessarily the best place for you to be exploring this side of yourself, is it? Um, the hanged man tells me that where you are, um, either you you have, people are very close-minded, or you, you have to... Um, restrict yourself in ways that you would not necessarily have to elsewhere. Um, that you have to sort of bind yourself to whatever um, whatever agenda your family has or your, your, um, your, your town or city, uh, the culture of your town or city. You know, you, I, I see yourself, you as being very limited here in terms of the scope that you actually have to work with, which is which must be very depressing for you, and maybe that's really where we're getting our Nine of Swords crossing you from, is just the disconnect between the star and the hanged man. On one hand, you really want, you know, this broad scope, this big world view, and on the other hand, you live in a place that really does not allow you to do that and to explore that. Thank God for God's internet, right? Um, you know, which allows us... <laughs> um, 
to sort of explore ourselves through uh, through other people and our connection through other people that we would have ne- ne- never necessarily met uh, otherwise. You know, uh, I think the internet has done great things. Uh, and I'm so glad that you're uh, using YouTube to kind of get your ideas out there and stuff. I think it's really great. Um, what I see for your immediate future, what's coming in your way, is the Ace of Swords. Now, um, this, for me, the Ace of Swords always uh, tends to represent, and I know that I always phrase things like that, and, and most readers would tell you never to say, I always read blah, blah, blah like this. Um, but I do think that the Ace of Swords represents, uh, a kind of coming to a conclusion, uh, sort of reaching, reaching a point where you have made a decision on something, where you've definitely decided on a singular path, this is the path you're going to take, and you don't quite know whether or not it's going to go well or bad, but it's still the the focus that you've chosen to take. And so I see you coming into greater focus, greater clarity in the immediate future, um, kind of honing down uh, into a specific track that will appeal to you. Um, and I do think that this, um, well, uh, we'll get to long term in, in, in the future in, in a minute. Um, but we can at least say that coming in your way is greater sense of clarity, uh, which is which is interesting as a kind of foil to the Prince of Cups because the Prince of Cups for me is is very obfuscated and um, has a personality that is not particularly revealing. You know, there's a there's a big contrast between the Prince of Cups in your past, who is kind of secretive, um, a little manipulative sometimes. Um, but generally a very, um, a very intensely spiritual person himself. You know, I think whoever this is in your life, they also have a very, um, determined sense of spirituality and have a very committed sense of spirituality, but they are very private about it, um, if they are at all. Um, they have a very questioning nature too I think and I think that they 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 pro- they perhaps don't necessarily trust um, what it is you're, you're the path you're taking they perhaps see it as a little too um, too free too free uh, in a way um, and I get the, that sense also from the seven of cups which we have not talked about yet Sorry, enjoying my cup of coffee as I do this for you today, Heather. Um, your Seven of Cups in the crown position, that's a very interesting position. And um, it's its always interesting, you know, the crown, if you know anything about the Celtic Cross, which I'm sure you do, um, the, uh, the crown position, of course, is usually read or interpreted as our best position, you know, sort of like the best possible thing that can happen, the best path for you to take, the, the advice from your higher self. And the interesting thing about the Seven of Cups is that the Seven is not considered a particularly good or virtuous card, and so to receive that as your advice from your higher self is interesting here. But I think it does connect to the fact that you overall, you know, being a water card, the other water cards in your spread are, are sort of holding you back. Um, I think you feel like you have to, out of just either familial ties or um, whatever responsibility or obligation you feel to this person or people like this person in your life, um, because I do feel like you feel obligated to sort of keep yourself limited for the sake of these people. Um, I think they see it as the Seven of Cups, um, but I think we can see it more as you exercising your imagination and, and being more creative with yourself. And if they're going to see it as a kind of um, almost uh, evil uh, or a kind of sin in a way, uh, in, it, in its... Um, in its... How do I want to phrase this? Um... In its seemingly fantastical quality, um, then 
it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if it, uh, what I'm saying basically is that, or what I'm trying to say rather, is that I think it's easy for for other people uh, of different backgrounds to look at what we do um, and see it as not necessarily, even less connected to the here and now than most religions already are. Uh, <laughs> you know, people see the kind of stuff that we do as very out there. And I think that it's saying that to some degree, yes, um, it is out there, it is imaginative, it is very creative, it is a little fanciful. It isn't necessarily even real. Um, but that it's not a bad thing for you to necessarily pursue. If you're passionate about it, and if it's allowing you to explore other vistas that can be helpful for you, then there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, and I think it's telling you to pursue that. Um, in general, it's just it's it's telling you to pursue it in a way that I think also is unabashed um, to just not be ashamed about it and to just go go for it. Um, and it's almost like it's almost like seeing it as a form of indulgence. And I think it's telling you that it's okay to indulge in this in this case, you know, um, <laughs> there's a great, uh, writer from, I believe the 14th century from England who wrote this, uh, beautiful text called the cloud of unknowing, slightly famous. And, uh, in it, he says something to the effect of, uh, there really, uh, you can, you can never do anything out of moderation. It is always bad to do everything in excess except contemplation. Contemplation is the only thing that one can do in excess that is okay to do. And I think it's kind of saying a similar thing here for you. Um, at least that's what I'm getting from this. If, if that has a different connotation to you, um, you know, uh, then, then by all means go for it. But, uh, cause I'm sure it, it might, but, um, yeah, I think for for what we've got here, that's what it's it's trying to get at. Okay, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. Your uh, your hopes and fears are interesting. Your hopes and fears are represented by the seven of discs, and I think you are afraid of not really getting anywhere. I think you are afraid of not necessarily being able to cultivate what it is you want to cultivate. You. I think want to, on some level, uh, perhaps bring forth fruit in the land that you live in, and I think that you there are clear signs that indicate that would be difficult. Obviously, um, it can also mean that you, uh, just in terms of self development, you know, because I think you also are going through a big period of self development and self understanding and, and learning as well. And I think you possibly are afraid of hitting a speed bump or um, hitting a wall, you know, because I think that you possibly see yourself also as um, trying repeatedly a lot of different things and they're not necessarily working for you. Uh, you're afraid of constantly falling short with the return value of the work that you put into certain things. And... I think the Seven of Discs is a tricky one because the Seven of Discs is so easy to read as very negative. But I do think that it is important to remember the Rider Waite definition of the Seven of Discs, that the Seven of Discs can also reflect um, hard work over a long period of time that does eventually yield something. It might not necessarily be the grand return that you wanted, but it's something, and it's, it's still something of value. Um, but it is hard, difficult work. Um, alternatively, maybe that's something that you look forward to at being a Taurus. Perhaps you, you know, you like getting down to the nitty gritty. You like, um, patiently working at things over a long period of time, perhaps. <clears throat> but I don't, I don't necessarily think that that is accurate here, <laughs> um, in retrospect, looking at the Knight of Wands here, um, <clears throat> just because I see you overall as being very excited and having a lot of gusto about this and 
the Knight of Wands, of course, happens very quickly and gets over himself uh, very quickly, just as quickly as the poor guy came. And so I, I kind of sense that, you know, your level of enthusiasm for this um, is making you wish that things were moving quicker, um, perhaps wishing that you could make a little more progress a little more quickly. Uh, but I do think that in the immediate future with this focus that you're going to get with, through the Ace of Swords, whatever clarity is coming your way or is coming into fruition currently, it could work that way as well. Um, if, there, if there's something that, that's been on your mind lately that's just sort of on the, the fringes of becoming a real idea, um, some sort of new focus that you're perhaps contemplating taking, I think you're going to take it, and I actually see it, as I was going to say before, but I didn't want to spoil it, um, I see it actually becoming a really good thing for you. It actually <clears throat> yielding a good result for you. When And I know that that's big for you because you're afraid of that, as we were just talking about. We're, you're afraid of not getting that sort of uh, cultivation that you're looking for. And I do see it happening for you. I think whatever path this is that you're about to take is actually going to help you quite a bit and um, is, is an appropriate path for you to take. Um, I also see a lot of feminine stuff here and a lot of Venus, symbols of Venus, which uh, is interesting, uh, you know, and important for you because I see you working with a lot of uh, feminist-based uh, pagan methodology, which I think works for you. Um, and I do think that the aspects of Venus here are very important for you and for your future development. It is perhaps uh, important to remember, of course, in uh, right now that the Seven of Cups, which of course is your crowning card, uh, is Venus in Scorpio, uh, which I do find interesting. Also, the star is a very obvious mythological representation of Venus, even though Aquarius does not necessarily have to do with Venus. Um, I interpret the star as a representation of Venus regardless. Uh, and so the star has Venus uh, connotations for me. The hanged man with its green at the top of the card, uh, which Crowley references as a reference to Venus and love, uh, has some Venus elements in it as well. The sword of the ace of swords is also green, which represents Venus and the unity of love. And the empress, last but not least, um, as your overall outcome, is the the planet Venus, and so everything is leading you towards this Venus direction, which which is is of course very interesting, um, and in conjunction with the priestess, we get this very in tune kind of natural feminine um, mystique, so to speak, um, very Betty Friedan, uh, <laughs> which is really cool, uh, and I think that you know. Uh, on one hand, that can be interpreted. I, I think there's a real earthy, to be very honest with you, I think there's a real earthy sexuality to feminine uh, mysticism and, and feminine religion, uh, in in and not in a way that is uh, prostituted in any way, shape, or form, but it is just in ver very much in touch with um, the art of reproduction and just the whole cosmology of... Uh, woman's role in in creation, and I think that women are blessed with an ability to really tap into that earthly energy. You know, I really do, um, and I think that that's something that you um, that you also sense deep within yourself. And I think it's a path that you uh, really can benefit from pursuing even further. Um, Again, I think, you know, going back to the, the excuse me, to the, the Prince of Cups business here, that being said about the Seven of Cups and kind of the sexuality implied in uh, feminine paganism, which is, of course, a very healthy sexuality, um, I think the others around you can see it as licentious, uh, you know, just getting back to what we were saying before. I think that really just kind of ties back into what we were saying. Um, and again, it, it's it's not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's telling you that it's okay to explore that stuff 
and um, to just go for it. If, if there is, um, and really not have any fear. Um, I almost, you know, I'm hesitant just because, you know, one can go back philosophically back and forth uh, about my, my, my dear Alistair Crowley, who I love to death, uh, for God knows what reason. Um, <laughs> but, but basically, you know, his whole approach of exploring pleasure sort of in a, in an Epicurean fashion and exploring the mysteries of sex is, was very important to, to our man Crowley, uh, Crowley, whatever. And I do think that that possibly is, um, a path for you to perhaps pursue if you've been possibly contemplating doing tantric yoga or something like that, um, Anything along those lines may or may not actually be uh, helpful for you or, or, or something that you could possibly benefit from. Um, these, this is all just food for thought. Um, but in general, if you continue to take the path you're on, I, I believe that you're going to start getting great, greater clarity of what it is you're meant to, to do, meant to choose. Um, also, a little more mental independence. I, I see you again as being very much under the, the philosophical thumb of whoever it is you're living with, near, around, etc. And I see you coming more into your mental own uh, with the Ace of Swords, kind of striking out a new path for yourself that is individual to you and, and sort of gets rid of some of the clutter that you're having to deal with as far as other people's opinions. Um, but in general, I see this is very good. I see this is very positive. Um, there are some cards that are, that are dark. I think it's easy to kind of miss the light where you are right now, um, and to see how more bleak it is than it is, uh, exciting. But I do think you also have a lot to be excited about. I don't think that the options are necessarily closed for you. I don't think that there are many paths that are closed for you here because you have the star in your root position really kind of leaving the whole thing very open to interpretation. Um, and the Empress at the end uh, sort of brings us full circle. You know, I think we can also see it from a mythological standpoint. You know, right now you are uh, perhaps fresh at all this, you know, the star is seen as the maiden and the empress is seen more as, uh, the mother. And of course the priestess over here is the crone. We have the triune goddess in your reading actually, um, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, and so I kind of see you just becoming more spiritually mature in general. Um, in the in the in the overall uh, outcome, uh, right now you may be a little green at this, uh, but I think you're going to start becoming a more rounded out, mature spiritual being as as time goes by, and you're going to learn. I think that also it is a process that it is a a, a long long process of maturation in which the individual really is slowly tried in the furnace of fire and found to be gold, you know, it really is along the lines of Book of Wisdom kind of stuff. Um, but I think this is all very good, Heather. Uh, if you have any questions for me, there's not much, uh, not much else I got for you out of this, uh, but I hope that it was helpful for you. And um, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Thank you for your patience in, in letting me get this out to you. And I hope it was helpful. And thank you for subscribing and all that. Uh, and let me know what you think. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh,